scientists have been talking about this whole issue of the difference between humans and chimps for a long time. What's new to me is that you call it a myth mm -hmm. that there's uh, this whole proximity thing is, is not nearly uh, as accurate as they proclaim it to be. So I was doing some research on Amazon and I found that there's uh, a variety of books on the topic, some for, some against, and one is called What It Means to Be 98% Chimpanzee. And so here's a picture of the book and I just thought that this might be something that we could talk about because I know that your view is very different and I'm very interested in hearing what you have to yeah, say. I have a very different opinion. I call it the 1% myth. Uh, about 1975, I believe, a paper was published by some evolutionists where they made the proclamation that, they, they made the claim that there's really only about 1% difference genetically between a human and a chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. Now this was before the Human Genome Project. This was before we really had much in the way of any sequence data. They had a little bit of data but a lot of speculation and a lot of evolutionary interpretation. And so they threw out this idea that we've got to be close to chimpanzee because they're our closest evolutionary relative. Maybe even as close as only 1% difference. Okay. And even though it didn't have very much data behind it, it became popular because this fit what evolutionists were thinking. This fit what they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And so for the next several decades, there was a lot of talk and a lot of acceptance, almost to the point that it really became an icon. 1% difference genetically between humans and chimpanzees. I've heard many Christians talk about only 1% difference. Wow, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it's, like, it's hey, just uh, kind of accepted that that's mm -hmm. what it is, without recognizing just how flawed the reasoning is, how, how weak the assumptions are behind it. Okay. First, the chimpanzee DNA that makes up all the chimpanzee chromosomes, okay, there's almost 12% more DNA in the chimpanzee chromosomes than there is in the human chromosomes. So how wow. can one say there's only 1% difference when there's almost 12% more DNA? Yeah. So the way they do it, of course, they just they ignore the 12%. Well, that doesn't count. Mm -hmm. I don't think the chimpanzee would agree that it doesn't count, but they just say, well, that doesn't count. If we get rid of the 12% di bigger, then there's only 1% difference. See? So already they're making a lot of fudging, if you will. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah, and, and that, you don't see that as kind of a, a footnote, if you will. 1% difference, but see fine print, there's actually 12% difference just based on size. You, you don't see that. So again, people aren't recognizing that's what's occurring plus the way the comparisons are done. You know, the human has 23 chromosomes, and you have two copies of each chromosome. So you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Okay. The assumption would be, just simply of how it's presented, just simply the way that we would think about it, the assumption would be that the 1% is based upon comparing human chromosome 1 and chimpanzee chromosome 1 and human chromosome 10 and chimpanzee chromosome 10. You know, just making those kind of direct comparisons. But that's not how it's done. If you do it that way, there'll be virtually no similarity. That's amazing. Right, <clears throat> because the argument is that there's been a lot of rearranging of the DNA, hmm. which is not totally wrong, but what it sets up is that you can't just compare chromosome one human and chromosome one chimpanzee. So the way they do it is they take the human chromosome one as example, and then they scan all of the DNA in all of the chimpanzee chromosomes, and they find very small segments, not genes, not regulatory sites, not functional units, just small segments that themselves may have absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Just very small segments, see, can we line them up? And so that's what they do to get the comparison. Well, this is obviously very fraught with error. And in fact, in 2010, a paper was published that looked at all the main methods of doing this type of comparison, because there's about six or so. Uh -huh. And it said they're all so off from each other. 
as hmm. far as they don't agree. Oh. Depending on hmm. which method you use, you get totally different results. And so they said, none of these methods really can be trusted, is what it came down to. There's, it's an unexpected variation within <laughs> the method you use. See, so what it comes down to is you essentially make the computer give you what you want to find or do. So this is a case where it appears that they really wanted there to be a very close proximity oh, between these genomes. Yes. And so they just fudged things, as you were saying, until it became, it, it gave them the results that they were looking for. The computers, the programs had a very high, a, a built-in high bias for evolutionary relationship. In other words, mm. presume evolutionary relationship as part of the comparison process. So they're assuming evolution to do this comparison and then using it to say, see, this demonstrates evolutionary relatedness. So it's really a matter of you assume to prove, and that's obviously not how it works. This is a kind of issue when I first heard about it through your program that it just made me feel angry. That, I mean, it was, it, it just seems blatant. It seems that there's blatant dishonesty. Now, you were saying that they have backtracked from where they were originally, but just they're, this they're whole saying, thing. Yeah, they're of, saying, okay, well, maybe it's four or five or six percent difference. So, so they're admitting the difference is more than one percent. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're actually saying, we never really meant one percent as, as a hard and fast rule. That was just kind of kind of a, a general idea about 1%, you know, plus or minus. And, okay. And, but I would suggest even the 4, 5, or 6% is not nearly enough. But again, this is not the sort of thing where if they are reporting on this 1% findings or, or 5, 6% findings, that they're going to also mention, well, by the way, there's a, almost a 12% difference between the humans humans Correct. and chimps. Um, mm -hmm. One individual that was a very strong supporter of the 1% for many years in 2007 admitted that probably we, at the moment anyway, really can't know. It, it, we, mm -hmm. we don't have the technology to really compare. And so we, we don't know what the difference is, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make any difference because the key thing is that it's important to understand that sociologically and geopolitically we understand they're very you know the similarity so okay. in other words he kind of he kind of throws it away from the science and moves more mm -hmm. into the psyche of it so you're you're a technical person you're reading these technical uh articles and you're understanding through their technical articles exactly their procedure and that they aren't you know they aren't including the 12 percent mm -hmm. they aren't uh, including, you know, some of the, the broad, just mixing up the, the two genomes, mm -hmm. you're getting into the specifics. Mm -hmm. So then when it gets to the point of where these articles get transferred to Time Magazine and Newsweek Correct. and so on, Correct. and they're doing their reporting, that's where, I mean, you've been able to figure it out, but unless the reporting to the general public is becoming clear that, uh, that there's these other factors, there just seems to be a dishonesty mm -hmm. issue here. It certainly is a misleading. Okay. Yes, very misleading. It was very important for me to be a scientist, to follow the evidence. I very likely could have been swayed to start moving down that path because that would have been what I would have considered doing the scientifically proper things. Can you explain to us what is ENCODE and some of the background to ENCODE before we get into junk DNA? Well, ENCODE is a uh, consortium group. So they imposed an evolutionary interpretation into the data to give that time frame. So here we are again, imposing evolution into the interpretation, giving you an interpretation then that fits evolution. Because of this prediction that this mysterious material in the DNA they suspected was, was junk, Therefore, they didn't really research it all that That's clearly. That's an excellent point. And so all yes. of a sudden, now yes. they're really researching it and they're finding all these medical yeah. possibilities. So it really held back not only genomics and genetics, but as you say, medical breakthroughs for probably at least a decade or two. Absolutely, because what's the reason of studying the junk? They go with the less efficient one is designed and the more efficient one is not designed. See, that's not even rational. It's a disconnect. Right. It it's just a, doesn't make sense. We need to let people have an option. Yes. That there is, design is an option. 
and, and not designed and in the Christians need to stop being so gullible. <laughs>